Fans from the USWA Broadcast Center, I'm Michael St. John with another great card of USWA Championship Wrestling. Before we get to all the action, though, I have a very important announcement to make. Last night at the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee, Jerry the King Lawler, the World Unified Heavyweight Champion, was upset. And the title was won by King Cobra. That's right, King Cobra is the new World's Unified Heavyweight Champion. I understand we'll be going to our studio in Memphis, Tennessee with Dave Brown and Jerry the King Lawler momentarily to get the reaction of the King after this stunning upset. So stay with us. Let's take a break. We'll be going to the Dallas Sportatorium also for more action. Right after these messages, we'll pick up with Jerry the King Lawler talking with our colleague Dave Brown. Studio right now with Dave Brown. Let's join him for this reaction. Well, we're back, and uh, Jerry Lawler has joined us right here. Been getting a lot of mail about you the last uh, couple of weeks, too, as a matter of Well, I guess you're pretty excited about that, aren't you, Dave? The well, only time you get mail now is about me. Well, I, I've been getting a lot of mail about you. There's <laughs> yeah. no doubt about it. Well, uh, before we talk about the mail, let's, who, re who reads it to you? <laughs> I read it myself. Oh, do you? Okay. Well, let me ask you this, Dave. Uh, I'm sure you heard about what took place last night at the Coliseum. I did, indeed. You'd lost the title. And, uh... I got, were you excited about that, Dave? I mean, did that, like, bring a smile to your face? I was a little bit surprised, and yet, uh, any, on the other hand, I wasn't, because uh, King Cobra has really Please, been hold on it, hold on. Let here. me stop you right there. Don't refer to him. That's how this whole thing got started. Do not refer to him as King Cobra, because that's not... I, want, I brought along this, I brought along this little uh, article here. This is what happened the last time somebody else came into Memphis and tried to, tried to call himself the king of wrestling. And this just goes to show you, this is an article right out of the Memphis Commercial Appeal. And what happened was, I took the person to court, and if you can see right there, it says royal headache solved. And it, basically it says that the Memphis court ordered the World Wrestling Federation to quit representing other wrestlers as the king of wrestling after Memphis wrestler Jerry Lawler filed a lawsuit that says he holds exclusive rights to the king of wrestling trade name. So quit calling Cobra King Cobra, okay? Cobra. All right. Now then. I, the court's on his side in this one, all right. Okay, now then. Cobra was able to, after I might add, I had to wrestle two matches. You know, I had to wrestle Bill Dundee, a top... Yeah. A top contender anywhere in the world today. I had to wrestle Bill Dundee, one of the toughest men in professional wrestling, one of the hardest matches I ever had in my life. And after, you know, you would think they would say, like, take a break, let's have a little bit of an intermission. But no, as soon as I get through wrestling Bill Dundee, they're there ringing the bell. And here's Cobra, who's fresh, because, by the way, he was supposed to wrestle Tommy Gilbert in the opening match, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Tommy Gilbert, for some reason, didn't show up. So Cobra is sitting there fresh as a daisy, and he comes in, and he comes in and jumps me from behind, uses every illegal tactic known to man. I thought I would at least get a clean wrestling match out of Cobra. Use it. Hey, you can see what they think about that. Well, I, I'm, I, what they think and what actually goes on are two different things. But you see, I'm not upset about this, and I'll tell you why I'm not upset. Because I've analyzed this. I've had all night to think about this, and believe me, that's what I've done. And what I've come up with is... This is going to be the ultimate embarrassment for Cobra. This is going to be the ultimate humiliation. Because you see, Cobra, I'm sure right now your dreams have been realized. You're sitting out there, or well, you're probably here today, but you sat there last night out in Orange Mound in that one-room shack of yours with your 18 or 14 or 15, how many kids you got, and your wife, and you're showing them that belt, and you're having your picture made every time you can get to a camera, and your dreams have been fulfilled. You're the world heavyweight champion. But let me tell you something, Cobra. The way I am going to shatter all your dreams is this. I'm going to make you go on record book as being the shortest lived champion in all of wrestling history. Not quite the reaction I was expecting out of Jerry the King Lawler. I expected him to be a little hot under the collar after losing that unified world heavyweight championship belt. Uh, he seems to be very confident. We'll be getting back to wrestling action from our studio in Memphis right after I bring you up to date on one of the current feuds in the USWA. That between maniac Matt Bourne and P.Y. Chuhai. It seems for the past several weeks, P.Y. Chuhai has tried to injure maniac Matt Bourne in the ring. Let's go. We put together some segments as to what has happened and what has transpired. Let's take a look at that right now. Bourne 
in the corner. Pulls Gaylord out. The reversal. Here he comes over in front of us. Close line. What a close line Matt Bourne just gave Jeff Gaylord. Matt Bourne's going up on the ropes. I've not seen Matt Bourne get up on the ropes. What's he going to do, Mark? Waiting for the right moment. Here he comes down with a big splash and rolls all the way over. What a cross body block. Bourne was in the air 15 feet. Matt Bourne and now. This is obviously related to that earlier interview in which Kojo was wound up because P.Y. has come down here with a kendo stick. They're spreading Matt Bourne out. 300 pounds climbing way up there. Look out. What's P.Y. Doing? He's getting ready. Oh, no. He was going to slash him off the top rope. That would have been the... That's what he did to flamboyant Eric Emery not too long ago when it got all that horrible mess started. If he would have hit him with that off the top rope, that might have been the end of Matt Bourne. Wow. Really getting out of hand as Zach Bourne called in the good. What in the world is Chris Hatton doing signing autographs at Tom Thumb Page? What a slam he just gave him. Well, that ought to really draw a big crowd. Tom Thumb Page having Chris Adams there. Who cares about Chris There's a lot of fans in Gainesville. Here's the pin. Bourne turns him over, pins the shoulders, and gets not one or two, but three. And oh, look out. out! Hey! All right, Billy Joe's trying to... Here's P.Y. Two out. Right. Look what he's got. He's got Kojo's Pendo stick, buddy. Ha! Take this, Bourne. Take this. Yeah! This is what you get. You know, he's just lucky this is not Robert Fuller after what he's done. Look at him. Akbar has brought all this on. He's down here. P.Y.'s got the stick. They're holding Bourne out. They've got him pinned and stretched out. Here comes Dustin Rhodes. Here comes Jeff Jarrett and Jimmy Jack Bunk. Well, they barely got here in the nick of time today, didn't they? Bourne was just about to get it, Mark. The thing I'm concerned about is we haven't seen the last of this as they're trying to go after him up the aisle right now. So that's the background on the feud between Maniac Matt Bourne and P.Y. Chuhai. Last night in Memphis, Tennessee, while Jerry the King Lawler was losing the World Unified Heavyweight Championship to King Cobra, in Dallas, Texas at the Sportatorium, Maniac Matt Bourne suffered a serious injury at the hands of P.Y. Chuhai. Let's go back to last night at the Sportatorium in Dallas. We'll be back with more USWA wrestling action right after this. USWA Wrestling Excitement returns to Evansville, Indiana, Wednesday, January the 17th at the Evansville Coliseum. It's a marvelous seven-bout card, including a six-man tag team bout featuring these two awesome teams, the Soul Taker, the Dirty White Boy, and the Master of Pain, all teamed together against Dirty Dutch Mantel, Steve Austin, and Chris Champion. See Maniac Matt Bourne against P.Y. Chuhai with Tocho Yamamoto. Dustin Rhodes squares off against gorgeous Gary Young in a big grudge feature. And the main event has a special stipulation. It's Billy Joe Travis against Bill Superstar Dundee in a guitar on a pole bout. That's right, a guitar will be hung high atop a pole in one corner of the ring. Whoever gets it can use it, and believe me, it won't be to play music. That's Bill Superstar Dundee against Billy Joe Travis and more Evansville Coliseum, Evansville, Indiana. Wednesday, January the 17th, 8 p.m. You know, I really hate coming to Evansville and that nasty Coliseum and looking at those nasty people. I've been coming there for a long time, and I thought I didn't have to come there anymore. But the last two weeks, I had to chase Bill Dundee all over that dirty, scummy Coliseum because he said, Billy Travis going around and hit me with my guitar, with that guitar of his. Well, let me tell you something, Bill Dundee. Mick Jagger gave me this guitar, and I'm not going to put it on the pole and get a scratch on it, but let me tell you one thing. I've got a bigger and better guitar that Hank Williams Jr. gave me, and I'm going to bring that big orange guitar to Evansville, and I'm going to put it way on that 10-foot pole, because, boy, let me tell you, I didn't get the job done two weeks ago 
But this week, I'm going to bust that guitar right over your scrawny head, boy, because I'm the world's most talked about professional athlete. And by the way, I'm going to play you a little song right now. Listen to this, Evansville. Michael St. John back with you with USWA Wrestling. Now let's join Dave Brown over in Studio A. Big match featuring Bill Superstar Dundee. Dave, take it away. Danny well, Marlin out here right we've now. We've got a match right now. No, Referee wait, Jerry Calhoun is here. Hold, here comes Wait a minute. Hold we've it. got a match. Hold we it. need to get in the hold ring. It, Dave. And we're not going to have any matches. We're not going to have anything. Hey, put that camera back on me right now. It's time for we're a week. You've been out here. We're not going to have any matches. We're not going to have anything out here. 17 minutes. You've been going hey, on and on. Oh, it's time to get a match underway. We haven't even had a match in the ring yet due to all of this. Reddy is up here ready to go. And Bill Dundee is opponent due out here. What? Come on, Lawler. Well, Reddy's leaving. Looks like he's convinced him. Reddy is leaving. Hey, hey I'll hey. tell you when we can have a match. Look, we can have a match. We need a match. We can have a match. Hey, it's very simple, Dave. If you want to have a match here on this television show, Wonder Cobra and get his name on a contract. Then we'll have a match. Dundee, you can stand there like the idiot you are for, or all day if you want to. There ain't gonna be no match. Well, hey, there ain't gonna be no match. I'm telling you that right now. If you think there's gonna be a match or a show today, unless I got my return match, you got another thing coming, Dave. What? Eddie Marlin, get out here right now. Uh, Cobra, get out here. There ain't gonna well, be no match. You don't need to look at no papers. It well, don't matter what you got here. Reddy is gone. I mean, Bill yeah, is going right. back to the dressing room area. The only thing I know to do. You don't even have a job, boy. Hey. He's saying you don't have a contract and you don't have a belt, and he's got the uh, CWA heavyweight title around his waist. Well, I can I, tell you this, Dave. You ain't got a show here today unless you get any more. Uh, we're going to get something. We're going to get something done. I'll tell you that. We're going to take yeah, a break right now. Don't we'll be take back no here. Break. We're not going to take a break. You leave it right here on me until Eddie Marlin comes out here. Get out here, Marlin. Where are you? You've got the jerk. Well, it looks like we're having some difficulty in Studio A getting a match underway. Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, trying to uh, run the show, I guess, but uh, uh, Randy, uh, is, is Bill out in the hall? Can we, can we get Bill Dundee in here? Is that, is that possible? Uh, we need, uh, folks, I apologize. We're, we're a little lost here on the, in the program because our timing has been uh, a little confused. We're over in Studio A, Dave Brown having some problems. Can we get, can we get Bill in here? Can, can we get Bill in here? Eddie, you need to find him and get rid of the Superstar Bill Dundee. Bill, coming into the studio now. Dan, I don't know what's going on over there. That lava has went completely nuts. I have never been put out of a match by nobody in the clue. Why am I talking about Lawler? You have got everything in it. Shamar's up here, Lawler, including me. I'm thinking Jerry Lawler, and I ought to be talking about that idiot Billy Joe Travis. Now, Travis, you got two up on me, brother. It's twice you've hit me with that guitar. Now, this week, brother, they're going to put that guitar up on top of a pole, and the first one up gets to bring it down and put knots all over the other one's head. Well, like I said, Billy Joe Travis, you're two up on the superstar, but when I get done with you this week, brother, and make no mistake, write this down in your little black book, the superstar's going up the pole, and I'm bringing the guitar down, and I'm bashing it right over your head. And I'm telling you, Michael, that lawler is nothing. Okay, I've got word. We're going back to the Studio A. Dave Brown, take it away. Hey, let me tell you, wherever you are, Dave Brown, and you too, Dundee, you gutless wonder, you run and hide somewhere else in the studio, you'll be back with what? You'll be back with me, and you better be back with Cobra and Eddie Marlin out here and say that I got the match, or you've just seen the last of this wrestling show that you're going to see for today. And Kid Parnell, I know you're up there running those little knobs and turning around those tapes. You run another tape, brother, and you're going to answer to me. Do you understand that? USWA Wrestling Excitement returns to Evansville, Indiana, Wednesday, January the 17th at the Evansville Coliseum. It's a marvelous seven-bout card including a six-man tag team bout featuring these two awesome teams. The Soul Taker, the Dirty White Boy, and the Master of Pain all team together against Dirty Dutch Mantel, Steve Austin, and Chris Champion. See Maniac Matt Bourne against P.Y. Chuhai with Tojo Yamamoto. Dustin Rhodes squares off against gorgeous Gary Young in a big grudge feature. And the main event, 
has a special stipulation. It's Billy Joe Travis against Bill Superstar Dundee in a guitar on a pole bout. That's right, a guitar will be hung high atop a pole in one corner of the ring. Whoever gets it can use it, and believe me, it won't be to play music. That's Bill Superstar Dundee against Billy Joe Travis and more Evansville Coliseum, Evansville, Indiana, Wednesday, January the 17th, 8 p.m. I'll tell you this, we're not going on with nothing else. Hey, do you, Bob, do you think Eddie Marlin's going to come out here or not? Huh? Huh? Hey, Eddie Marlin! Hey, Eddie Marlin! I don't Can you think hear me, Eddie Marlin? Come on, I don't think hey. he's coming out here. Eddie Marlin! I think what we need... Hey! Hey, Eddie I Marlin. think what we need to do, you can rant and rave all you want to. Hey. Ken, we've got you a tape. get out here, Eddie Marlin. We're we've, not going to have no... No. We've got a tape of some Parnell action... You run any tapes. ...with Jeff Jarrett. Ken? Hey! Ken, please... Ken Parnell, Roll hold the tape. Hold Let's just, take a let look me, at let it. Let me say this to you, Ken this Parnell. Is... Let me tell you something. Ken Parnell, who's sitting up in that control room right now, if you run another tape, brother, and you know me, and you know me well enough that I, that I mean what I say, if you run another tape while I'm standing out here, you're going to answer to me. You, Ken Parnell. I'm telling you right now, you get Eddie Marlin out here, or this show ain't going on. It's as simple as that. This show has to go on. No, these folks, the these folks tuned in to watch a CWA well, wrestling show, not to watch you rant and rave for 90 minutes. Here, and Ken, you know what? please. Now, don't get over there and get ready to ring no bell, Dave. I want to ask you who, did you, who do you think was in control right then and ran that tape? The producer. Which is who? Ken Parnell. Ken Parnell. Now, what did I tell him right before he ran that tape? Well, what did I tell him? Well, what did I say? In spite of what you're trying to say out here, you're not running the television well, show. you don't think so? Let me no, just show you No, the producer's you this. running. Well, how long, how far will this microphone, I don't even need a microphone. It won't go far, well. Now, come on, Laura, I don't know where you're going. <laughs> out of the building would be nice. He's out in a hallway. Well, he's going up. To, uh, is that the spiral staircase? He's going up to the control room. Ken, looks like he's headed in that direction. Uh, there's not enough light out there is, what, is what's happening here. You may be able to see some movement in the background, but I don't know where he is right now. But he was going up a spiral staircase that leads up to, uh, to our second level here where the, uh, where the producer is. Now well, there he is. There's Lawler. He, he has no microphone, so we can't hear what's going on up there. All right, the, well, the, yeah, there's the control room right there. All right, he's in there. The, our director. There's Howard. Where's Ken? Can't see Kevin. Uh, oh, come on now, Jerry. He's just doing what he's supposed to do, for heaven's sakes. Now get out of there. Get. get. Lawler confronting the producer, not happy with the tapes have been running. He wants Eddie out of here, Eddie. Back in the USWA Broadcast Center, well, the comment I made earlier about Jerry the King Lawler not being upset about losing the Unified World Heavyweight Championship, you can throw that one out the window. Obviously, he is upset. Not only is he upset, he is disrupting this entire program. So as we try to establish contact with our satellite link with Dallas, Texas, to go to the Sportatorium, let's take a look at a, a very special piece of film that our producer Randy West has put together concerning a uh, not-so-good Elvis impersonator in Billy Joe Travis. Let's take a look at it right now.
Wrestling fans, while, while we were away, while you were watching that video on Billy Joe Travis, I have been informed from Studio A in Memphis that a major altercation has broken out. Jerry the King Lawler busted into the uh, locker room of King Cobra. I'm listening to Eddie Marlin even as I speak. And King Cobra has now agreed, yes, King Cobra has agreed to put up the World Unified title against Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, this is apparently being signed right now. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more right after this on Championship Wrestling. Well, he wanted him to join his forces. Maybe he's going to punish him now. I don't know what his reasoning is. But Chico has again turned down the offer of Skandor Akbar. Look at Gaylord and Braddock getting pumped up. Here we go. What a weird team. Mark, you know, this Tito Carbella, he doesn't have a brain in his body. He'd be listening to act. Who are you talking about? Tito, right there, the guy you was just talking to. What do you mean, who am I talking That's about? That's Chico Torres. Whatever, okay? Look, he's a Mexican. He, just, he, he doesn't have a brain, man. He, oh, Akbar is offering him a chance to soar with the Eagles instead of running with the turkey. He's He's crazy. Chico will open up against Sheik Braddock, and our six-man tag team main event is underway. Well, let's see how good Julio Martinez does against Sheik Braddock here, buddy. Now, hold it. Are you all... No, I know you're not all right. I won't even ask. There it goes. Sheik Braddock, Chico in the pin. One, two. Akbar beginning to pace back and forth now. What is this, man? This crowd seems to be with this Felipe Gonzalez guy. Terrence, you are really making enemies. What do you mean making enemies? He's the one but that's making an enemy. I, I'm not going to get upset with you, Terrence. This is your last night on television, so... Jeff Gaylord encouraging him to get back as Chico Torres having his best bout yet with the USWA. You know, uh, the, the fans really seem to be getting behind Hector Morocco here, you know? Something's going wrong. I don't understand. What, what are they hollering for him for? You're deliberately mispronouncing his name, aren't you? What do you mean deliberately? Hey, all those Mexican names sound alike. It doesn't matter. They all look alike. He I chew I who doesn't look like anything we've seen. This is the drug over. And it's Chico Torres in oh, Pedro's really looking pretty good here. Look at him. He's got this new eye off his feet. Huh. You no, know, he's a smart man. And if he wants to have something to do with Pedro, there must be a reason behind it. Pacing back and forth, Tojo not happy either. Terrence. Of course I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy myself more when Akbar's boy here get this, get this Julio Martinez in the ring and beat his brains out like he deserves. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, Terrence, because this is your last fight on television and I want you to enjoy it. Yeah, you keep saying that, but we'll see. Look at that reverse shoulder breaker. This Gaylord's a big guy and Funk just nailed him. Chris Adams just gave this Gaylord. Gaylord, look at him. He is a physical specimen, Mark. He's a big guy. Horn frog. What is a horn frog? Look at, look at Adams. 
him. He's in control, you know? He's got him wrapped up. He's got that arm bar on. Notice how his, his legs over top of Gaylord's face so he can't get up. Oh, look there. We got, we got Fernando Valenzuela coming in now, huh? Okay. Terrence, do I get to say anything here, or are you just going to babble the whole time? What do you think about this, you Pedro? Have, you what have, do you think about You him? have interfered in wrestling. You have taken over the television. You have concealed foreign objects. And that is why you will be suspended Monday morning. You've been drinking again, Lorenz. <laughs> you know, I don't blame you. If I had a mug like yours, I'd fill it with cheap beer. But, you know, you say things that's not even right. I, I don't believe you, buddy. Hey, what in the world is Pedro doing? Chick Law Toys putting on a wrestling clinic here with Chick Braddock. And Chick Law stays right on him, and Akbar is not getting what he has wanted in more ways than one. Well, I tell you right now, Julio's going to get what's coming to him, Mark. Akbar just threatened him, and he doesn't make idle threats. I promise you, he does not make idle threats. Chris Adams got Chief Braddock back in the corner. He whips him in. Oh, what a close line. Adams will bar the iron. And Tojo and Akbar are both quite frustrated as to what's going on. Boy, Adams has got him. Look how he's got that arm. He's got his, his leg across Chief Braddock's face. He, there's no way that Braddock can get out of this unless Chris wants him to. He may break that arm, Mark. Joe Yamamoto trying to distract the referee. Remember, it was P.Y. with the kamikaze attack on Matt Bourne last night. We've now got Matt and Jeff both out of action with pretty severe injuries as a result of Billy Joe Travis and P.Y. Chuha. You know, when you have 300 pounds coming off a top rope and crashing on the back of your neck, boy, I don't know. Bourne may never wrestle again. You know, he's an idiot. He's a moron, but he may never wrestle again. If he had a brain in his head, he wouldn't get in the brain with P.Y. Chuhai, Mark. He doesn't have a brain in his head, so we don't have to worry about that. You know, this Adams can wrestle. You may not like him, which I personally don't think much of him, but he can wrestle. He's, he's worked on this arm for Braddock's now for probably three or four minutes. He keeps going back to that arm. That is good technical wrestling, Mark. Big elbow by Jimmy Jack Funk as he comes in, picks Braddock up completely off his feet. Well, there's the Funk back, first time breaker. Cheek needs to get over and he needs to make a tag. He needs to get P.Y. Chuhai in there. P.Y.'s the more experienced in his team, and I believe he can turn it around for him. What an elbow. Funk pins him, he may be over with. He drops the leg, Mark. Now he's going for the pin. Braddock kicks out, P.Y. wants in, tags, gets in as the legal man. Jimmy Jack picks 300 pounds of P.Y. too high up. Look at Jimmy Jack go. What a feat of strength that was. That was sheer muscle and determination. Yeah, but we got we got Chico Carbella coming back in or whatever this guy's name is. Look at him. Chico hits that shoulder in the corner when P.Y. got out of the way, and P.Y. is giving instructions to... Sheik Braddock to do something, and he must have been distract the referee, because look at this. Out to the floor goes Chico. Oh, yeah, what'd that tell you? P.Y. Chuha's got uh, Jose Guacamole down there now, and he's taking care of me, isn't he? <laughs> this is what I said we need to do. What did you call him that time? Jose Guacamole. He's got him, buddy. Look at him. He's got him back in that corner, and Akbar's talking Akbar to him. Akbar is right in his face, pointing that little whip he carries, and Chico's still saying, he's still saying no, Akbar. You know, I didn't want this to happen. What? You, you, you ordered this to happen. How could you say you don't want it? You see, this is hurting me more than it's hurting Chico. My heart bleeds for this young man. I didn't want this to happen. I offered him a chance to be a superstar. And now he's paying the consequences. You know, I'm really, really upset. I offered him to come, not to wall on this line, but make the big time with the general. This is really hurting me more than it's hurting Chico. I'm really so sorry this has happened. 
Let's take a commercial break before this gets even more disgusting. USWA Wrestling Excitement returns to Evansville, Indiana, Wednesday, January the 17th at the Evansville Coliseum. It's a marvelous seven-bout card, including a six-man tag team bout featuring these two awesome teams, the Soul Taker, the Dirty White Boy, and the Master of Pain, all teamed together against Dirty Dutch Mantel, Steve Austin, and Chris Champion. See Maniac Matt Bourne against P.Y. Chuhai with Tojo Yamamoto. Dustin Rhodes squares off against gorgeous Gary Young in a big grudge feature. And the main event has a special stipulation. It's Billy Joe Travis against Bill Superstar Dundee in a guitar on a pole bout. That's right, a guitar will be hung high atop a pole in one corner of the ring. Whoever gets it can use it, and believe me, it won't be to play music. That's Bill Superstar Dundee against Billy Joe Travis and more Evansville Coliseum, Evansville, Indiana, Wednesday, January the 17th, 8. PM. You know, PY2, it makes me sick. You and that little Tojo Yamamoto running around by the USWA doing anything you please and getting away with it. Well, I can see the end of your road because when you interfered in my match, cost Jeff Jarrett and me not only the world titles, but cost me my neck. Put me out. Well, I think it's about time that you're held responsible for your actions, P.Y. I think you're being held responsible in Evansville. Because when you come to Evansville, you lace your boots up real tight there, P.Y., because you're going to get the gut check of your life. And look down at that little Tojo Yamamoto. He's not smart enough to give you instructions, and you're not smart enough to take them. When you come to Evansville, buddy, Leave it all alone because your butt's mine. It's payback time in Evansville. We're back after the scandal Akbar sob story on how this hurts him more than it does Chico. He's acting like a parent spanking his child. In the meantime, Gaylord is way up on the turn, up and down with the fist print. Hector, uh, Hector Martinez there, he's got him up and he's hurting him bad, Lord. Look at your boy, Gaylord over with a stomp on Tory. You know, Akbar's like a, he's like a parent teaching his child a lesson here, Mark. He came over, he just told you it's hurting him more than it's hurting Chico here. You know, he, he, it's his discipline. That's what this is, Mark. He doesn't want this to happen to Pedro. If Pedro would just listen to him, Akbar would call this whole thing off. Yeah. Now Akbar is calling him over here again. Let me see if I pick up what he's saying. Do you have problems, Chico? Do you have problems, son? Oh, he has problems. And it hurts me that he has problems. I'm sorry. I really hurt. You know, I got You see. It's really hurting his side. Here's a young man that's being wasted. Just wallowing in all that gutter sight like you, Chris Adams. Now it's Adams complaining to Skandor Akbar while P.Y. continues the punishment on Chico Torres in the ring. Do you see that? He's rubbing Pedro's face right in that mat. <laughs> He's got renegades, rampage, Matt Burns on his face. <laughs> Terrence, you have a long distance phone call that you need to go take care of. It can wait. It can wait. I want to see what Pedro gets. No, there. no, it's important. You got to go right now. You don't, you don't have time to do any more television. I'll, I'll, I'll go later. I want to see what they do to Pedro. They may, they may disable him for life. All it takes is just a little signature. Look at that punishment. Is this right, Bart? Is this right? Act, you remind me, you remind me of a good father. You're just trying to discipline your son here, aren't you? It's just like I have to take him out behind the woodshed. 
like you Americans like to punish them a little bit. That's all. It's just like, just like taking them out behind the barn and a little discipline here and there. But it really, really hurts. But you have to do those things. I'm like a good American father. <laughs> a good American father. Isn't that wonderful? That's beautiful. He thinks he's Ward Cleaver. Over into the ropes, they take Chico Torres, and they continue the punishment, and Akbar's right there in his face. How does he keep saying no? I don't understand what in the world Hector Guacamole's doing. You know, this is just, all he had to do was say, yes, Akbar, I want to be in your Devastation Incorporated. I want to soar with the Eagles. He called his whole thing off in a minute. What, what do you want to pin for? He's going to make him sign the contract. Oh, I see. Well, you're right. He wants him to sign the contract. Look at Tojo over there also getting into this mess. He wild with a big chop to the throat. No, that wasn't a throat. That was his sternum. That was a thrust. An oriental thrust to the sternum, Mark. Look at those stomps. Call it what you want to. It was a chop to the throat. He's hitting him with boy. <laughs> Akbar with pencil in hand trying to get him to sign the contract. <laughs> Wanting him to sign his name on the piece of paper. Bring my card back, Akbar. Poor Hector doesn't have a brain in his head. You know that? Nor do you. There's the big knee lift by Jeff Gaylord. He's as bad as Matt Bourne. In the ropes, it's Gaylord in charge. Pinning Chico in those ropes and letting him have it with not one but two elbows. Boy, I tell you what, Pedro Tortilla has been whipped on for the last 20 minutes. It seems like he can't take much more of this, Mark. Oh. Come on, man, this guy, you know, what is his nutrition, what is his diet? You know, I know he probably lives on those uh, jalapeno peppers. I know he's got a lot of fire in him, but come on, this is ridiculous. They're killing the guy. Big Braddock now, they will not let Chico tag anyone. They're giving him punishment from Akbar, obviously under the act orders of Skandor Akbar. Here's Tojo in his face now. Tojo's just trying to advise the guy. He's saying, make him sign the contract. Well, the young man may be from some hospital bills. What can I say? You know, I've always been a good and gracious individual, Mark. As I've said before, I do not like to repeat myself. But a man of my esteem, you see, he missed his opportunity. And I hate that this is happening. Oh, what an inopportune time for this to happen, Terry. If he'd signed the contract, you'd call this off right now, wouldn't you? We've got a miss in the ring. Here comes Adams. And the referee did not see the tag. Braddock was distracting. Oh, how frustrating. And now I didn't see the tag either, Mark. You say there was a tag. Well, that's because you were talking to Akbar. You didn't want to see it. It's getting out of hand. We better get that stretcher back down here that Jeff got hauled out on because I think uh, Pedro's going to need it. He's going to need a stretcher. Mark, he's foaming at the mouth. This is a dangerous level they're pushing this kid to, Mark. This is dangerous. I'm telling you right now, I've seen guys like this in the wrestling ring before, and he's just about to go out. Hey, well, continuing, they have not let Chico get over there to tag. The one time they did, it was Sheik Braddock jumping in the referee's face to distract him. Rocco could not see it. And Akbar again in the face of Chico Torres.
He may have neck damage, Mark. A pin, one, two, three. This out is over. That may be the best thing for Chico at this point in time, the way things were going. Back at the USWA Broadcast Center. Now, that was some exciting six-man tag team wrestling action. If you like wrestling on television, boy, you got to enjoy it in person. If you would like the USWA in your hometown, I've got information on how to accomplish that. Take a look. Now you can have the stars of the USWA in your hometown. It's America's number one fundraiser, USWA Wrestling. The stars, the action, the excitement, USWA Wrestling. For more information on how you can raise money for your organization, write the USWA, Post Office Box 1783, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37077, or call 615-824-8523. USWA Wrestling, America's number one fundraiser. We'll be back to more USWA Wrestling action right after these commercial messages. day here on the USWA Championship Wrestling. In addition to the matches you've already heard about, the big six-man tag action, Matt Bourne against P.Y. Chu High, gorgeous Gary Young in the feud with Dustin Rhodes, and of course the big main event, Billy Joe Travis and superstar Bill Dundee in the ring with the pole and the guitar on top of the pole. It has been signed. King Cobra will defend his newly won World Unified Heavyweight Championship belt against the former champion, Jerry the King Lawler. What a great card of action from the USWA. Hope you've enjoyed all the action today. Be sure to join us next week. I'm Michael St. John from the USWA Broadcast Center. Saying so long, everyone. From the USWA Broadcast Center, Michael St. John with you. Boy, have we got a wrestling program on tap today. Lots of action from the Sportatorium, including Jeff Jarrett, Jeff Gaylord, much of Devastation Incorporated. You'll see gorgeous Gary Young, Billy Joe Travis, and many more stars. In fact, I understand we have an interview on tap right now at the Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas. General Skandar Akbar and Billy Joe Travis are standing by with Mark Lawrence. Mark, take it away. Billy Joe Travis. You acknowledge this role, boy. Somehow I believe that. Ak what? Akbar, what are you doing? You're making a terrible man. You little punk, Jared. You see this popcorn punk? That's your brains. Get the idea? Feature this, people. The brains of Jeff Jarrett. You know, if I'd had time, I'd brought scrambled eggs down. Because you see, Jeff, that's exactly what I think of you, boy. So you see, Jeff Jarrett, you know I, little punk, you know I have got your number. And you know the man of the hour, Billy Joe Travis. 
You see, I don't eat this American garbage, but you see, it's synonymous with your brains, Jeff. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Yeah, look. Look, Billy Joe. You know what? You know what? Let me say something. Let me tell you something, Jeff Jarrett. You have got to be the stupidest wrestler that ever lived. Hey! Let me tell you something, boy. Look how many people I have retired in two months. Where is Eric Embry? Jelly Valley Eric Embry. Where is that fat, pudgy Percy Pringle? And where is Tony Adams? You don't see none of them around because they're scared of the lethal weapon. Now, Jared, you know better than anybody in wrestling how tough and how mean and how vicious I can get, boy. You don't want a part of me, never. So, boy, hit a sign, and I'm going to beat your brains out. I guarantee it. All right, well, let's... You see, you take the man seriously. Because Billy Joe can get down, and you little punk, I'm gonna make you shine my shoes, and I'm gonna put a choker chain around your neck, and I'm gonna drag you all over this auditorium, you little punk. Jeff Jarrett, your days are numbered just like this stale popcorn. You see, the brains of Jeff Jarrett. That's it right there, yeah. Okay, Billy Joe, you like it, huh? What do you think about it? You eat the garbage. You like it. He's very all right. Once again, Jeff Jarrett, how naive can you be when you continue to interfere in devastation business? Well, devastation has now made the stand. Jeff Jarrett, I'm going to relish every moment that the man of the hour, Billy Joe Travis, and all the bad deeds that you've done to Billy Joe, that you're gonna pay, and you're gonna pay dearly. Oh, I love throwing this garbage around. All you hungry punks, all you people on welfare, get down and lick this popcorn. Remember, lethal weapon. Well, well and I'm not through talking. What's the matter with you? You hold it till I tell you. You understand? You don't go away when the general and the godfather's talking. Come on down and lick this popcorn. Come lick this popcorn. We're, we're going to go to break, whether he's through or not. We're going, going to break. We'll be back you in a minute. Don't go anywhere till I tell you. Boy, sometimes I'd like to see Skandar Akbar clean up the messes he makes with all that popcorn on the floor. Oh, well, the program must go on. We're going back to the Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas. Mark Lawrence has action. Starring Simply Irresistible, Jeff Jarrett. Down the aisle comes Jeff Jarrett. The song says Simply Irresistible, and most of the ladies will agree. As Jeff makes his arrival here at the auditorium, ready for our next exciting bout. And thanks again to Mike for throwing it to us, and we pick up the excitement and are ready to move on into this exciting bout. Who in the world is this guy that Jeff's wrestling, Mark? That's what I want to know. Look at him. <laughs> Look at that shape he's got. Boy, if that's not a childbearing shape, I don't know what is. Jared. Look at that new outfit Jeff's got on. Boy, that's sharp looking. <laughs> I like that. You know, he's simply irresistible. <laughs> Jeff ready to go in the black tights, the bell rings, and we are underway. Well, I'll say one thing. The problems between Jeff Jarrett and Billy Joe Travis are certainly far from over because Akbar has made a terrible stink, not to mention a terrible mess. And Jeff Jarrett rallies the crowd as this bout rolls. Akbar's just trying to feed some of these hungry kids out here, Mark. I respect that. He's sharing some of his wealth. All right, he's got... Jeff's got the Irish twist on James Rapp here. Ha, he's taking him up. He's got him in a top wrist lock. Gonna take him down. He's controlling his man. That's great wrestling. 
Back on the arm, Jeff Jarrett picks up where Dustin Rhodes left off. Now he throws young James Rapp, and there's the elbow. Welcome to the wrestling business, Mr. Rapp. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett picks him back up, picks him all the way up, and turns him over with a body slam. And Jeff Jarrett, one of the most exciting individuals you'll ever see in the ring. With good looks, great charisma, great strength, and tremendous speed. It's just too bad that Billy Joe Travis is so mad at him, Mark. You know, he could end Jeff's career. Jeff Jarrett now wants to put James Rapp in another suplex. Your pink ruffles are, are flying around in my face. Can't you keep them on your whatever that is instead of in the air? Don't sit so close to me. Jeff's got him, and he takes him over, and he bangs his head in that hard turnbuckle. He's making a mistake, in my opinion. He keeps looking to the crowd for crowd support. Boy, that just tears my stomach up. See that, Mark? See that? There's no use in that. Head smashed in the turnbuckle again. Boy, he hit that thing nose first, Mark. Up on that center rope, it's Jeff Jarrett. With the fans chanting with every drive, James Rapp learning this sport the hard way on national television against the likes of Jeff Perry. Oh, man, that hurt me, and I'm sitting down here five feet away from it, Mark. Oh, he shouldn't be allowed to use fists like that. Boy, that makes me mad. From Rapp goes down to a clothesline. That was as solid of a clothesline as I've seen out here in a while. He just nailed that kid. I think he could pin him, Mark. He should pin him. Picks him up with a body slam, and over and down he goes. Jarrett into the ring, delivers an elbow. Well, you know, Jarrett really irks me. He's beating this kid to death. What in the world is he doing? Man, come down and got that pop going up over there. Wait a minute. Hey, what's happening here? Oh, what man. Man. I thought that was the custodian here to clean up Akbar's mess. It is. It's just a fan that got mad. Boy, I don't blame him. Jeff Jarrett should have pinned this kid. That's just a that's a fan or a custodian or something, Mark. Some weird-looking individual with a... This is a little weird. Wait a minute. Wait what a minute. World? What are you doing down here, mister? Hey, I'm just an old man. If an old man can do that to Jeff Jarrett, imagine what my friend Billy Travis could do to him. I'm just an old broken down man, just an old garbage collector. I pity you, boy. That is obviously Billy Joe Travis who is limping around and he has come in the ring with a garbage can that he faked to be using as a janitor would and smashed it over the head of Jeff Jarrett and look at the big dent in the garbage can and look at Jeff Jarrett. Boy, Jeff sure is making people mad. It's something when a custodian comes down here and nails him with a garbage Rocco can. Rocco Lubitsch looking Mark? with a desperate look. Jeff's in bad shape. I don't know exactly what to do now, but we need to do something. So let me just, just say, I guess we'll be back. United States Wrestling Association presents another great USWA card at the Evansville Coliseum in Evansville, Indiana. Wednesday, January the 24th at 8 p.m. See the Soul Taker meet Tommy Montana. See the Dirty White Boy face Chris Champion. It's Big P.Y. Chuhai with Tojo Yamamoto in his corner. Chuhai going against the maniac, Matt Vaughn. Dustin Rhodes meets gorgeous Gary Young in an Indian strap bout. The two men will be strapped around the wrist. They can use the strap as they please. To win the bout, you must drag your opponent around the ring and touch all four corner bucklings. See Bill Superstar Dundee meet Tojo Yamamoto in a stretcher bout. Bout continues until one man who then becomes the loser is carried out on a stretcher. And the main event is an emotional confrontation between Billy Joe Travis and Jeff Jarrett. That's the USWA in Evansville, Indiana at the Evansville Coliseum Wednesday night, January the 24th. Action begins promptly at 8 p.m. Well, just take a look at me right now. Does it look like I'm a nervous man? But one thing, I don't like coming to Evansville because you people stink. You wear the same clothes every week, and it's the dirtiest city in the world. You know it is. 
Now, Jeff Jarrett, I heard through the grapevine, he's coming in here talking about a change in Billy Travis. Well, that's right, there is a change, Jeff, and it's for the best. You say we were one of the most successful tag teams in CWA history, that's right. But the people in Evansville, as they remember, every time we won a match, old Billy won the match. Every time we lost, there's old Jeff, one, two, three. I got to pick him up and carry him to the dressing room. I got tired of that, boy. And that's the reason I punched you over the head of that garbage can. And if you fool with me, I might hit you the guitar. Just ask Bill Dundee how those guitars feel. He'll tell you he don't like it at all. And Jeff, when I get to Evansville, there's going to be some pain, but it's going to be on your head, boy. I'm telling you, because Billy Travis, there is a change, and a change for the best, boy. Okay, Mark Levance back with you. Terrence Garvin here as they're helping Jeff Jarrett onto the stretcher after the shot to the head from the garbage can from the so-called janitor. Oh, it was a janitor. I talked to him. You know, Jeff had got a... Joe Travis. Oh, yeah. did you see Billy's face? I saw a beard. I heard his voice. He hadn't got a friend in the world, Jeff doesn't. Look, Matt Bourne and all of them are out here now, but where were they when he got hit in the head by the janitor? <laughs> Gaylord came out to hell. I am very concerned about Jeff Jarrett's condition hey, now as the garbage can is removed from the ring, and so is Jeff. And now Akbar and Gaylord are complaining about this delay and trying to get over there, and Jimmy Jack Funk is having to stand between the stretcher and Jeff Gaylord. Well, Gaylord's trying to help carry Jeff out, I guess, huh? I'll tell you, some people have no sense of sportsmanship or no understanding of humanity. Uh-oh, what? It is getting out of hand. Jeff already out could be even more seriously injured than he already is, and Akbar doing nothing to stop it. Look to me like Jeff is just trying to help him. Oh, my. I'll tell you what. I'm beginning to think we've seen everything. There's Jeff Gaylord, the Missouri Tiger. And Skandor Akbar proudly moves around the ring following his big football lineman who's now a member of Devastation Incorporated. Well, I don't know what to tell you about Jeff Jarrett. I don't know any more than you did. You saw the situation and him being carried out. I know what to tell you about him. Hey, stop about yourself, the thing that I want to say about him is he's hurt again. He has no friends in the world, Mark. You got janitors coming out here jumping on him now, boy. This is something. He's really making some enemies in the USWA. All right, Terry Black has arrived, ready to face Jeff Gaylord. And Tony Falk is waiting on Gaylord to get out of his ring jacket, and we can ring the bell and commence. There's the bell. Here we go. Well, I don't envy this Terry Black guy at all, I'll have you know. Jeff Gaylord, look at the muscles on this guy, Mark. Akbar over here making a bigger mess with the popcorn as Terry Black is thrown down by the Missouri Tiger. You see that? He tried to get a top wrist lock on Jeff Gaylord. He threw him off like a bag of potatoes. Jeff, the Missouri Tiger gets better and better every week that goes by. At Devastation's training camp, this man is simply awesome. Look at the physique, and now coupled with the wrestling technique, this man is going to be, or I should say, is unstoppable. Jeff Gaylord, newest star on the right. You look great, Terry, you look great. Thank you, Axe, thank you. You know, I've noticed that Axe really been working with Gaylord. He's really teaching him a lot. He's showing him how to be vicious and mean, Mark. Whoa, what was that? Kid man broke his arm. Ha, I like that move. Terry Black in bad shape on Jeff Gaylord as Jeff, after glowing in front of the crowd, moves over, picks him up, turns him over, drops him down sideways on the rib cage over his leg and knee. Look at that. Man, he's going to break this guy's ribs. Boy, he's being mean, nasty today. Here's a pin, but only for two. Oh, that kid kicked out. Boy, he's got a little gut or else stupidity, one of the two. Gaylord enjoying the benefits and the educational abilities that uh, one gains from being a part of Devastation Incorporated. It may not be a very sound education, but it is beneficial. Well, I'll tell you right now, Akbar's made this guy a fighting machine, Mark. Look at him. 
What a kick to the ribs. He's working on this kid's ribs. Now he's gonna rub his face in the mat. We watched this bout after Jeff Jarrett was carried out on a stretcher and then nearly knocked off of that by the Missouri Tiger. Somebody's ruffled this guy's feathers, Mark. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is great. Black is thrown in the ropes, comes back, tries to take Gaylord down, will do it, but Gaylord delivers a quick little left jab, right jab, and that ends the temporary black momentum. What a shot, boy. That was right to the mouth, Mark. He's got him up. What's he going to do? Drops him over that top rope. Black bounces back, choking and gasping. Man, I tell you what. This guy may never want to get in the wrestling ring again, Mark. Gaylord is eating his lunch. This is vicious. Again, over the bottom rope this time as the choke continues, and Akbar is over to get right in his face. Look at Akbar. He's just giving him a little moral support, saying, get back in there. Try and fight him. Oh, boy, I respect that Akbar. with an A and Terry Black is knocked off his feet. Terry Black's in outer space. That's where Terry Black is. He doesn't know where he is. Here we go. Oh, this looks like he's setting him up for the big football tackle. That's how he used to do it when he played for Missouri, Mark. Gaylord moves over again. Now, a more experienced opponent might move over and try to get the pin, the win, and the purse that goes with it. Gaylord again moves off the line of scrimmage. Takes him down and picks him, turns him over with another body slam. And Jeff Gaylord just continues to show off for the fans. Oh! Gaylord goes yet higher on the rope, way up there. And a pin could be, might be, and it is a Jeff Gaylord victory. What do you mean it might be? He killed the guy. The winner of the match, the Missouri Tiger, Jeff Gaylord. All right, we send it back now. Back with you at the USWA Broadcast Center. I am in contact right now with the Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas, checking on the condition of Jeff Jarrett. We will let you fans know as soon as I find out, or Mark Lawrence won, we'll let you know on the condition of Jeff Jarrett. We must take a commercial break here. Let's do that. We'll be back with more action after this. <laughs> United States Wrestling Association presents another great USWA card at the Evansville Coliseum in Evansville, Indiana. Wednesday, January the 24th at 8 p.m. See the Soul Taker meet Tommy Montana. See the Dirty White Boy face Chris Champion. It's Big P.Y. Chuhai with Tojo Yamamoto in his corner. Chuhai going against the maniac, Matt Bourne. Dustin Rhodes meets gorgeous Gary Young in an Indian strap bout. The two men will be strapped around the wrist. They can use the strap as they please. To win the bout, you must drag your opponent around the ring and touch all four corner bucklings. See Bill Superstar Dundee meet Tojo Yamamoto in a stretcher bout. Bout continues until one man who then becomes the loser is carried out on a stretcher. And the main event is an emotional confrontation between Billy Joe Travis and Jeff Jarrett. That's the USWA in Evansville, Indiana at the Evansville Coliseum, Wednesday night, January the 24th. Action begins promptly at 8 p.m. Still no word on the Jeff Jarrett situation. Before we go back to Dallas in the Sportatorium, let me bring you up to date on a confrontation between gorgeous Gary Young and Dustin Rhodes. As you know, there's been a bitter feud brewing for the past few weeks. Gorgeous Gary Young going after Dustin Rhodes. A few that dates back to a confrontation between Gary Young and Dustin's father, the infamous Dusty Rhodes. We have Gary Young at ringside. Mark Lawrence, let's hear what he has to say. Okay, it's time for Skandor Akbar to unveil gorgeous Gary Young for a conversation with... You know, Mark Lawrence, I get sick and tired of coming out here time after time and having a guy like Dustin Rose come out and attack me viciously while I'm trying to just give and tell these people out here the simple truth. Time after time after time, 
This man has been intimidated. He has to come out here and use physical violence to try to set me up. Well, let's do a little history. Let me tell you something, Dustin Rhodes. I'm not much of a historian, but I know about your family. You claim they're from Texas. Well, let's go back a little bit. You got that fat old man in here, that yellow-bellied, fat back old man, Dusty Rhodes. You got that great, great, great grandpappy, Slick Rhodes. You got that great, great grandmother, Dirty Rhodes. And you got that big old fat hips the size of Roseanne Bar, Giles full of molasses. And it comes down to this. You got one ugly family, but the bottom line is, from you to your great, great grandpappy, idiot road, <laughs> you're all yellow. You're yellow through and through, from the bottom of your toes to the top of your fat, egotistical head. Now, let me tell you something, Dustin Rhodes. I'm tired of coming out here week after week and telling these people that you're a low life that you are. Because you know what? It's hard to put the kind of stuff you want to put out when you got so much excellence with what you got right here in front of you. So I'll tell you what, Dustin Rose, why don't you try to get that yellow streak off your back, get that big fat yellow belly, fat belly, you and your old man Dusty Rose, Dustin Rose, you see there's Slick Rose, and then don't forget old Bumpy. You know who Bumpy is, don't you, Bumpy? Bumpy Rose. Bumpy's his sister, because everybody's there. Dustin Rhodes takes the ring. Man, Dustin Rhodes came down that aisle like the Broadway Limited between Chicago and New York. He was rolling wide open. And Akbar is giving hand signals over here at ringside while Dustin really works over Gary Young. Oh, here's Jeff Gaylord. That's who Akbar was calling on. Gaylord has arrived to help out Gary Young, and now it's two on one on Dustin Rhodes. Now Akbar is handing Gary Young something. He's putting something on his hand. It's that glove. It's got that chain around it. And Gaylord is going to hold Gary Young. Hold Dustin Rhodes while Gary Young uses the glove with a chain on it. And it's out of control, Bedlam here at the Sportatorium. Here. I tell you what, that's just another example of back jumping by Dustin Rhodes. He came out here, he stuck his nose where it don't belong. Gorgeous Gary's teaching him a lesson. Back into the ring goes Dustin, and you can tell the results of that glove as Gorgeous Gary wants to use it some more. What a mess. Dustin attacked the mouthing Gary Young on the interview. Akbar up the ring himself now, and it's another shot from that glove. Yeah, they're teaching him a lesson now, aren't they, Mark? This is what he deserves. He comes out here, Gary's just trying to do an interview. He jumps in from behind. Now he's going to get it. He's going to pay for it with some blood. Dustin Rhodes in terrible shape. Jeff Jarrett in terrible shape. Now Dustin in bad condition. And Agbar calling for more. Agbar has got to be sick. Dustin can't even stand up. They're having to hold him up to hit him. Of course he can't stand up. They're using a chain on him. That's what he deserves. Back jumping, coward. Whatever Gary said down there was true. <laughs> Everything was true, Mark. Look at that head. Well, everyone's screaming. Here comes help. Jimmy Jack Buck with his rope and cowbell, and he's swinging at anyone close. What's he doing out here? And this is out of hand now for Dustin Rhodes. Let's check on him. We'll be back. Back at the USWA Broadcast Center today, I guess you could call it the Medical Center. I have word on Jeff Jarrett. He is conscious. He is in the dressing room. He has a severe headache, but no permanent damage, and that is good to hear. I will check on the condition of Dustin Rhodes, and while I do that, let's go back to the Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas with Mark Lawrence. Schedule, we have a match with Billy Joe Travis. 
I'm going to take a victory lap right now for the victory go, today. Go, Here we go. go. Follow me. Follow me. As you can see, Mark, Billy Joe Sanders has such tremendous talent. He's a great, well, he's a great, uh, what would you say, vocalist? He's a vocalist. He's no a wrestler. He can do it all. And one mistake everybody makes about Billy Joe, they underestimate this man's tenacity because he can get down. Billy Joe Travis can get down and he can devastate with the best of devastation. What else can I say? You see, don't ever believe in your mind that devastation weakens because I always bring them to the top. Billy Joe Travis, the man of the hour, the king of the litter, Billy Joe Travis, a man of such magnitude, a man of such talent, and I'm happy that he's with Devastation Incorporated. Incidentally, he's well paid. Well paid. I'm sure he is. All right, now then. Billy Joe ready to wrestle in the ring. You notice that Terrence Garvin is back, although Terrence was nowhere to be found during the Von Erich bout. Oh, Mark, I'm sorry about that. You see, I got a phone call back there. Pookie was sick. Pookie. I had to call the yeah, my dog Pookie was sick. I had to call the vet. I had to I had to arrange a few things. I'm sorry I missed that match. I, I won't let that happen anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please do. Billy Joe now, ready to go against Johnny Rand. And hey. Billy Joe trying to get the crowd to clap for him and chant for him, and they won't do it. Is Mike in there? Hey, Mike. I can't hear Mike on my headphones. <laughs> You're not going to hear Mike. He communicates with me from the control room on my headset. Hey, how, how come, you know, the people in Memphis know me. But I, I want to talk to this guy. Well, he doesn't want to talk to you, Billy Joe. Billy Joe? Hey, I'm going to settle this. Wait till I get back there and talk to these people. Come on, Billy Joe, get him. They've got me mad now. Uh-oh. Akbar. Angry with some of the fans as Billy Joe Travis and Johnny Rand continue. I notice you have your USWA calendar with you again, Terry. Well, I've just taken a look at a few of the pictures, okay? I'm just running through it. I heard they got a special price on this calendar, $10. Is that right? Are you stopping on Jeff Jarrett's picture again? Well, that's a nice picture. You know what? Travis angry with the throng on hand here at the Sportatorium, one of the great old wrestling arenas of the world. Kind of like a Tiger Stadium or a Fenway Park or Comiskey Park. You sit right close to the action. Great history in the building. Great place to enjoy action in person. And you be on hand for the USWA, wherever it may be, across the USA or anywhere around the world. You see that Rand guy? What's he doing? He's going to make Billy mad, and he's going to pay for that. I believe Akbar is angry over here at ringside. Akbar, are you okay? All I can say is what I've said before. Billy Joe Travis, what an individual he's become. You know, he's a talk of the town, so to speak. You see, Billy Joe knows when you produce a devastation that you get that long green, like you Americans like to say. Listen in here, I'd like to say one other thing. Devastation has open training camps to everybody, but not everybody makes it. What a snap, Mayor. Did you see that? He just stomped that Johnny Rand's face. I told you Johnny Rand shouldn't have touched him. Billy Joe Travis, who's really wreaked enough havoc already, is trying to wreak a little more on Johnny Rand. Picks him up, deals him down with the slam. Beer? Where'd you get that? Uh, you got a little wrestling terminology there. I like that, Mark. You've been hanging around me. I'm starting to rub off on you. I next, hope not. Next, you'll be wearing pink. Down comes an elbow. But my resolution is not to let Terrence upset me, so I'm just going to ignore Terrence. Now here's hey! Joe holding the microphone. Here you big pot belly man think you're tough? Come on in here! Come on! The door's open! Pot belly. Come on! Just what I thought. Oh, you scared of me, boy. Get up, Jeff Jet. Say I quit. You give up. Tell you what, that Billy Joe is as low and as arrogant as you can get, in my opinion. 
Wait a minute, is this your first day with a new brain, Lorenz? What do you mean is low? He's trying to make an example out of, of this kid. He's trying to call for Jeff Jarrett. Jeff's not coming out here. You know what, Lorenz? You know the thing I like about you is you make me look good out here. That's what I like about you. Tell him I give up! Say I give up! Tell him! Tell him! Tell him you give up! No. Give up, boy! I'll beat you to death! He should give up, Mark. Rand says no, and Billy Joe continues. Donnie Rand hanging in there. No matter how bad it gets, he hangs on, and that's something he'll need in his career. What a side suplex Billy just hit him with. Now he's walking over him. Oh, this is humiliating. He's dancing. He's da What a talent this guy is. He can not only sing, but he moves wonderfully, Mark. You could really injure a man that way, but I don't think Travis is concerned about anyone's well-being except his own. I want some competition. Any of you idiots want to come on in? Billy Joe inviting him. He's intimidating factor. Come on! Be on Johnny Rand. Come on! He's completely, hey! completely intimidated hey, by Billy hey. Joe Travis, the man of the hour. Hey, well, Travis again has the house on. mic that Akbar keeps handing to him, either Akbar or Garvin. Hey, Boy, I don't see any fan wanting to get in there. <laughs> we got a smart crowd today, Mark. Billy Joe continuing to agitate and harass, and the crowd is really getting angry. I think Billy Joe's found someone that he wants, but... Well, that guy doesn't have any teeth. He, he might gum Billy to death, Mark. Look at him. He's taking his coat off. He weighs 120 pounds dripping wet. I'm saying, I bet he's really going to get in there with Billy. <laughs> well, Billy Joe back in the ring, and here he comes back over here again. Hey, boy, you're an ugly person. Come on up here, boy. I'll take both of y'all off. Both of you. I'll take any three men right there. You better sit down, boy. He's going to teach you a lesson. Billy Joe back in. I guess he's going to continue on Johnny Rand now after he's got the crowd stirred up. Many of the fans are standing here, very angry at the arrogance of Billy Joe Travis. Kind of an air of tension in the building right now. Oh, they're just angry because he's so great. They, they know that they, they live their normal lives, their little nine to five jobs, and this guy flies all over the world. He can have any woman he wants. Oh, they're just jealous. I can't stand you anymore. I look around, and it's true what they say about you, idiots. You're illiterate! Hey, what about these three fat women right here? Come on up here. Maybe them fat women would like to you, fight Billy Joe Mark. I've hit plenty well, of Well, if this is I just going to continue, we're going to have to take a break here because yeah, Billy Joe is just see. out of control with the microphone, and Akbar is really loving it. We need to stay on this, boy. This is great. This is entertainment. Billy's a showman. Look at him doing push-ups. I bet he could do them one-handed. Intimidation? Is that intimidation? <laughs> Billy Joe is incredible. No wonder they call him the man of the hour. Hey, first he puts, first he puts Jeff Jarrett out. Now he's putting Johnny Rand out. He may even put a couple of fans out. I right? exactly. exactly. Oh. Hey! What is this? Billy Joe just got his volunteer. Fans, we've got it right here, right now. I want a policeman to get a hold of Jared and throw him out of here, Mark. This is really out of control as they go up the aisle into the crowd. Let's sneak out of here, Mike. Thank you very much, Mark. Boy, I tell you, if Jeff Jarrett's got a headache, Billy Joe Travis has got a bigger headache right now. And the initials are JJ. Boy, oh boy, what action. 
We still have not heard on the condition of Dustin Rhodes. I will check further on that. Let's take a break. We'll have more USWA wrestling action right after this. United States Wrestling Association presents another great USWA card at the Evansville Coliseum in Evansville, Indiana. Wednesday, January the 24th at 8 p.m. See the Soul Taker meet Tommy Montana. See the Dirty White Boy face Chris Champion. It's Big P.Y. Chuhai with Tojo Yamamoto in his corner. Chuhai going against the maniac, Matt Bourne. Dustin Rhodes meets gorgeous Gary Young in an Indian strap bout. The two men will be strapped around the wrist. They can use the strap as they please. To win the bout, you must drag your opponent around the ring and touch all four corner bucklings. See Bill Superstar Dundee meet Tojo Yamamoto in a stretcher bout. Bout continues until one man who then becomes the loser is carried out on a stretcher. And the main event is an emotional confrontation between Billy Joe Travis and Jeff Jarrett. That's the USWA in Evansville, Indiana at the Evansville Coliseum, Wednesday night, January the 24th. Action begins promptly at 8 p.m. Billy Joe Travis. And the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about you is change. That's right, they say change is inevitable. And change is what makes the world go around. And yeah, Billy, you have changed. And I think it's a change for the worst. You know, when you walk down that aisle in Dallas, Texas, you were dressed up like a bum, like an old man. But Billy, that's exactly what you are. You're a stinking bum. You know, Billy, it just eats me up inside because me and you, everybody knows we were once partners and we had an awful lot of good times together. And I think we all won an awful lot of matches. Well, Billy, Wednesday night at the Coliseum, you're gonna walk down one aisle and I'm gonna walk down the other. And we're gonna meet in that ring. And there's one thing that you did in Dallas, Texas, is hit me over the head with that trash can, but there's another thing, you didn't put me out. Because I'm gonna be there Wednesday, and I don't care if I have to bring a trash can, a chair, a chain, it doesn't matter. I'm taking you out Wednesday night, and that's a promise, Travis. Michael St. John back at the USWA Broadcast Center. As I told you, actually, as you saw Jeff Jarrett in fine shape, we're still checking on the condition of Dustin Rhodes. Before we go back to the Sportatorium in Dallas, I understand Tojo Yamamoto is ringside with Mark Lawrence for his interview. Let me explain this to you. If you were not at the arena last week, maniac Matt Bourne beat up on Tojo pretty doggone good, and Tojo is just raising cane about it. I've already heard about it. You're fixing to hear about it, I feel sure. Mark Lawrence, let's hear what Tojo's got to say. <laughs> P.Y. Chuhai and Tojo Yamamoto. Tojo, why are you wearing this football helmet? I want to tell you, Matt Bourne, you crazy maniac, you mental insane maniac, you come down now. You try to hit my head. You try to hit my head now. Come on, if you got guts now, you come down here. You hit my head now. You scared, come on down. You Matt Bourne, you mental insane. Come on down. I tell you what, Matt Boron humiliated me, but he's not going to humiliate me anymore because I'm going to put my Japanese pit bull on that Matt Boron. He stole me. He was going to kill Matt Boron. He was going to just eat him up like dog. Matt Boron, come on. If you get boy, that gut. And Matt Boron, I tell you what, in Japanese, they said he's going to kill you and cross to you. Come on, you mad boron, you mental kitschy guy, Bagatari, Bonsai! Hi. Bonsai from Tojo in his football helmet, ready to unleash PY full force against Maniac Mad Boron. Tojo wearing the football helmet for his own protection to prevent attacks from Maniac Mad Boron. Well, I guess predictions do come true. Tojo Yamamoto making a big beef over Maniac Matt Bourne. Between you and I, I've got to say, I don't think that football helmet's going to mean a dime's worth of difference when Matt Bourne comes after Tojo Yamamoto again, and I can assure you that's going to occur. We're about ready to go uh, for more action at the Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas. Understand Gary Young, gorgeous Gary Young of Devastation Incorporated, on his way to the ring to do battle with Chico Torres. Let's go back to the Sportatorium in Dallas. What? Here we go, Mark. Wait, wait, Gary, wait. 
Wait. Now, Chico. Hold it, Gary. Chico. I'm asking you one more time, Another son. My patient is wearing thin. Now, obviously, you've seen what's happened tonight. You've seen devastation literally take apart Dustin Rose, Jeff Jarrett. But before I turn this tiger loose on you, I'm going to ask you one more time, Chico. And I suggest, son, that you think it over very carefully. Or else you saw what can happen. And certainly, son, you don't want to pay those kind of consequences. It's a shame a young man of your ability a man. Oh, what's the matter with you? Hold it down. We got to start the next. So I'm listening for your answer, and I certainly hope it's an intelligent one. Okay, let's start the next. Mr. Akbar, I thought about it. I told you once, and I told you twice, and I'm going to tell you again. Thanks for nothing. Oh, what a dummy his Pedro is. Mark, I who, guess he'd rather hey, talk. Who is Pedro? This guy right here. No, you know, that's not Pedro. I don't know who you're talking about. Pedro Fortes. Well, I think Pedro is out in the parking lot, and why don't you go find him? As Chico Torres opens up against Gordon's Gary Young, having turned down Skandor Akbar. Again. Boy, I tell you what, he hadn't got a brain in his head. Look at that drop kick Gordon's Gary hit him with. Pedro would rather go out on Saturday night. Drink tequila. Wait, eat, Gary, wait, wait. Eat, Gary. I'll kill you. Stop, stop. Stop, Gary. What about it, Chico? What about it, son? Akbar One more time. I'm giving you this chance of a lifetime. What about it, boy? Get it, Gary. Boy, I tell you what. Pedro, oh, man. He is, he is something else. I can't believe this guy. He hasn't got a brain in his head, Mark. If he had any brains at all. He's getting what he deserves, I'll tell you that right now. Look at that, Akbar's asking him, Mark. He's asking him again. He's giving him every chance in the world. Gorgeous Gary Young drops the knee down. What a knee that was. Oh, man. Chico better reconsider now. Well, it's obvious that Skander Akbar has coached Gary Young into punishing and punishing and punishing Chico Torres for the continued turn down. Yeah, he's punishing him. He's turned Gorgeous Gary loose. And, buddy, I'd rather have a... I'd rather have a chainsaw loose on my back than I would gorgeous Gary. Here's Akbar right in his face, still trying to persuade and still trying to punish. Man, I can't believe Hector. I can't believe him. What? Now, who are you talking about me talking to little men? I don't know where you come up with these names. It's Hector Morales or whatever he is. Gorgeous Gary Young just gets back up on his feet as Akbar and Gary have their own little strategy here on Chico Torres. You know, I figured it out, Mark. This Tito Fuentes, he likes pain. He likes it. That's the only thing I can figure out. Why would Tito go out here and subject himself to this? I think you're being very disrespectful to the Hispanic populace who watches this show. What are you talking about? You, making fun of Chico Torres this way. Making fun of him? What do you mean? I'm calling the match like it was. Gorgeous Gary just gave him a devastating knee when he came off the rope. And Hector, what's he doing? He's laying down there, spitting, foaming at the mouth. He's hurt. Akbar relishing all this as Gary Young punishes Chico Torres for refusing to accept the invitation to join Devastation Incorporated. Look at this. If Pedro would join Devastation, they'd take him, they'd clean him up. Look at that. He looked like he hadn't shaved in a month. <laughs> He's got taco breath. I can smell it from over you here. You see what happens, young man? You see what happens? Let this be a lesson to anybody. 
to anybody that refuses an offer from the illustrious General Akbar. All right, Jerry, punish, punish, punish. You know what he doesn't realize, Mark, is he doesn't realize if he joined Devastation Incorporated, he could be eating steak and potatoes three, four times a day, but now he'd rather be eating those refried beans and guacamole and whatever he's doing. Boy, this Cheeto hasn't got a brain, Mark. Akbar again over in his face. Akbar's even got a hold of him and is slapping him about the face. And Akbar, when he doesn't get his way, he gets even or worse this guy just you know he makes me sick what well, i'm afraid of is this is just going to go on and on until he can dance hey in his head in a bandage still bludgeoned from earlier it's dustin rose what in the world's this rose has lost a lot of blood and he's out here fighting gorgeous gary look at this he could die from this mark get him gary hit him with that chair Dustin Rhodes has come down to attack gorgeous Gary Young and misses with a chair. Akbar is moving away for his own safety. And Gary and Dustin are at it out on the floor with chairs. And Dustin knows he can't get hit in the head again, and he ducks. And now he's got the chair. And there it goes. Here they come, and I'm going to move. Oh, man, this is no call for this. Head into the table. Another back jumping incident from Dustin Rhodes, Mark. Get him, Gary. Grab that head. Now Grab that head. Part of a chair, and Dustin is nailed with that. And here they're going back in the ring. Here's Jeff Gaylord down here. Oh, yeah, let's even this up a little bit, Mark. Let's even even it, up. it up. It's two on one. Can't you count? Yeah, but he back jumping. Dustin back jumped Gary, so we just got to even it up. Here comes Jimmy Jack Funk and the Texas Connection is in force now. What the fuck is going in here? He has no business. This has nothing to do with him. Well, we can say the same thing about Gaylord. Oh, man. Funk, what in the world? He's got Gordon Scary up and him that reverse time breaker. They need to get, they need to regroup. Gaylord and Gary need to regroup. Dustin is going to make sure that Gaylord is disposed of, and away they go. Still at it in the aisle, boom. And Gaylord moves up the aisle. Boy, that's something, isn't it? The, the idiot leading the idiot, Mark. Texas connection makes me sick. I would not want to be gorgeous Gary Young when he meets Dustin Rhodes this week. Let's take a break. We'll be back after this. WA Broadcast Center. We are all out of time, wrestling fans, and I tell you all the action we had. What we attempt to do every week here in the Broadcast Center with action going on simultaneously from the Sportatorium in Dallas and from the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis is to bring you the best in wrestling action no matter where it's coming from, and we'll, hear, we'll bring you more of it next week. Also, I would like to uh, say this much. Gorgeous Gary Young and, and Dustin Rhodes, uh, Dustin and Jeff Jarrett are both in fine shape. Dustin's going to do battle with gorgeous Gary Young, and I wouldn't want to be in that man's shoes, I can assure you. And when Jeff Jarrett and Billy Joe Travis get in the ring, if Billy Joe Travis thinks he's got a headache right now, just wait when he comes to the arena and steps in that ring with Jeff Jarrett. There's going to be some head knocking and some fur flying, I can assure you. Next week, join us right back here for more USWA Wrestling. Michael St. John for Mark Lawrence. So long. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.
USWA Broadcast Center. Hello, wrestling fans. I'm Michael St. John. We'll take you to the action wherever it's happening. Today, shortly, we'll be going to the Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas, one of the finest wrestling complexes in the world, with our good buddy Mark Lawrence checking in on all the USWA action. On tap, maniac Matt Bourne, who recently has run into a bitter feud with P.Y. Chuhai, the big Japanese star protege of Tojo Yamamoto. We'll also check in on Jeff Jarrett and his battle and ongoing situation with Billy Joe Travis. And the young star, Dustin Rhodes, who has made outstanding progress here in the USWA, will check in on his latest action against gorgeous Gary Young and others. Many other USWA stars, a lot more action. Stay with us. We'll be going to the Sportatorium in Dallas right after these messages. Let's wait no longer. Maniac Matt Bourne is on his way to the ring. Mark Lawrence, take it away in Dallas. All right, you're watching the arrival of Maniac Matt Bourne, ready for an exciting bound here. And before he goes to the ring, I want to corner Matt here at ringside and talk about something that a lot of the fans have gotten wind of already, and that is a a football match involving P.Y. Chuhai. Matt, I, explain exactly how this works. Well, Mark, I was, I was hoping that you were going to let me uh, announce that. But talk about ridiculous situations here. First, you got this uh, tooth fairy over here, Terrence Corbin, doing commentary, which I just don't understand. And then another ridiculous situation, you got Tojo Yamamoto running around with a football helmet on. But after last night, after he threw the helmet in to P.Y. Chu, and I got Spear, let's put a little seriousness into this ridiculous situation. Yeah, yeah, Mark, uh, you spilled the beans, but uh, let me elaborate on a little bit. Let, let's have a little match. That is, if they are up to it, if P.Y. Chu and Chojo Yamamoto are up to it, take the ropes off the ring, put the helmet on, put the pads on. It looks like he's already got the pads. They just shifted down to the mid-drift, you know what I mean? But go ahead, put the pads on, put the helmet on, and I'll show you what Spearin's all about. You're gonna completely take the ropes off the ring, and then what happens? Uh, you wait and see. Well, we'll look forward to that, a football bout, pads, helmet, everything as we go to the ring and see Matt in action in our very first bout. Boy, I tell you what, Matt Bourne comes out and he attacks me. I would expect that from a low-class individual like Matt Bourne. But I'll tell you what, Mark, Tojo Yamamoto, you know, he's an awful smart man. He's not going to get P.Y. involved in anything. But, oh, did you see that? What a slap Bourne just gave this guy. My gosh. He's not going to slap P.Y. too high around like that. I'll tell you that right now, Mark. Lady Ag Bourne drags him out, hooks the arm, and turns him over with the suplex. You know, Mark, he looks really vicious today. Look at his elbow he just dropped on this guy. Man. Born from the ropes again, an elbow on James Rapp, who for the second straight week has had a tough assignment, and he's got it against Maniac Matt Bourne this week. Well, you know, I've said it a bunch of times. This guy's marbles are gone. He's completely flipped his lid. Now he's asked for a football match <laughs> with P.Y. Chuhai. Well, let me tell you something. They can take the ropes off here if you want to. P.Y.'s going to throw him around like a little rag doll. P.Y. weighs 100 pounds more than this guy, Mark. What's he think he can do about it? Foot. The way I understand it, the ropes come down. No ropes around the ring. They get up in there and just square off and ram each other. And whoever gets knocked out of the ring several straight times is the loser. It's three times. Look at Bourne rubbing the kid's face in the mat. Oh, man, he is he's vicious. He needs a psychiatric test. I'm telling you right now, the guy's crazy. But listen, if, if in this football match, when they take the ropes down, I think the way it has to do is the first guy that gets knocked out of the ring, what, three times? He's the loser. Well, I'm telling you what, you put pads on big P.Y. too high, there's no way that Matt Bourne's going to shove him around, buddy. Bourne with a big elbow and forearm, and James Rapp is knocked back down. You know, this is the kind of thing that'll make a guy like James Rapp quit the wrestling business. Terrence, 
what is this towel that you wore down here earlier and now have spread out all over the ringside table? This table's filthy. Last week there's popcorn all over it and it's dust and dirt. I don't want to get my hands on it, okay? Look at this. Rap, oh, he thinks he's got some offensive going on. Bart Bourne. Oh, Mark, that hurt me. Oh, my gosh, what a chop. Bourne chops James Rapp all the way off his feet. And picks him up, takes him into the rope. Here's the throw, the rebound. It's a tremendous foot right into the face and chin of James Rapp. Boy, that's reminiscent of Bruiser Brody there, Mark. He got his feet right up there. Uh-oh, I know what's coming. Belly to belly, look at that. And it's a one two three ten for many out in that board who has football bout excitement on his mind. All right, Mike, we send it to you. One of the top stars of the USWA, Maniac Mad Bourne. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more USWA wrestling action right after this. USWA wrestling excitement returns to Evansville, Indiana at the Evansville Coliseum Wednesday, January the 31st. We've got a marvelous main event, guitar on a pole. Jeff Jarrett against Billy Joe Travis. Whoever climbs the pole gets the guitar, can use it as they please. Other great bouts include Todd Morton against the Soul Taker, the Tennessee Stud Stable against Bill Superstar Dundee and Dirty Dutch Mantell for the World Tag Team title. Chris Champion leaving town. Dirty White Girl at stake. That's right. That's the bout. No time limit, no disqualification. The Dirty White Boy against Chris Champion. You'll see a Texas Bull Rope match. Dustin Rhodes against gorgeous Gary Young. And a football match. Maniac Matt Bourne against P.Y. Chu High. Tojo Yamamoto in the corner. They'll rig out in football gear the pads, the helmets, the whole nine yards. And the loser's the one who gets butted and knocked out of the ring three times. That's Evansville, Indiana, Evansville Coliseum, Wednesday, January the 31st. I'm stunned. We've been all over the country defending our belts, and now we've got to go into that nothing good Evansville, Indiana. And on the second hand, we have to go in there and defend our belts against a slime ball like Dutch Mantell and a little short five foot seven Dundee who couldn't whip half of me with the other half helping. You know, you know when we go to Evansville, I know how you feel. Every time you get you get your bookings and figure that you're going to have to be up there, you get a little bit down. Well, I do too, Brian, but don't let don't let it make you feel too bad because what we're going to do, we're going to get off the airplane and that good for nothing slime ball, Indiana, baby, of all places. That's enough to fire you up, ain't it? Let me give you something else to fire you up. Dutch Mantel, you know what a turncoat Nate. dog you are, Daddy? A rattlesnake, and you got that refugee from the Keebler factory over there with you, I'd say you're going down high fashion. I'm going to guarantee you something, Daddy. Stud Stable going to have the night of a lifetime in Evansville trumping your guts out. Chuhai and coach Yamamoto and we're obviously going to talk about football bout as I see P.Y. has got the pads helmets and he is an imposing sight in this ensemble. Well Mark Rose I, I want to tell you something these crazy mental Matt Boron want to challenge my P.Y. football match. I tell you this crazy Matt Boron look I tell uh, this, uh, like I said, the Japanese, we make better cars than America. We make better TV than America. We make better VCR than America. We make better wrestler than America. And we make better football player than America. And then we, and I'm, I am a better businessman and intelligent man than America. But I, I ask, I need little, little help on a football, uh, football game. So I call my friend, Jimmy Johnson, the Dallas Cowboy coach. And he teach me everything about football. Yeah, uh, that's right. He teach me everything about the business, about football. That's right to me. 
My friend, Jimmy Johnson. Your friend, Jimmy Johnson. Now, Ima, what I see, uh, PY Tuni, Ima, it's supposed to be, I did teach, teach him little the workout, and I show, show him little sportsman, eh? Ima, Toto. Ima, Toto. What is this? A demonstration? He, that's block. I teach him how to block. Now, same thing. Ima, Toto, on a high knee, then, Kakiruna. What, what is this now? This is a high knee. High knee, how to run. See? I show him how to run. Reminds me of Gail Sayers. High knee, high knee, high knee, high knee. Maybe a little Walter Payton there, too. See, I have another week to train him more. I have another, like I said, I have another week for him to train all the, get him in tip-top condition. And I want to tell you that Jimmy Johnson is going to be here and see the match of P.Y. Refrigerator. And he is going to take P.Y. 2 for the Dallas Cowboy team. You understand? All right. Oh! Say something, Terrence. You know, Mark, I never doubt Tojo Yamamoto because he tells the truth. The only thing that I question is why would he go to Jimmy Johnson to learn about football? <laughs> Obviously, he can't coach. They have a 1-15 in 15 team. <laughs> they ought to go someplace else besides the Dallas Cowboys organization. Well, now, here's something interesting as P.Y.'s P.Y. refrigerator, as Tojo called him, Anyway, his opponent arrives, and it's big 290-pound Texas Battleship. Well, Bob Lilly, he's not, but P.Y. Refrigerator, or Refrigerator Chew High, whichever you wish to refer to him as, has gotten into the ring with helmet, pads, and the whole nine yards, no pun intended. Boy, I feel sorry for this Texas battleship. Look at this guy, this Texas battleship. Boy, P.Y. takes him down, didn't he, Mark? He did, and that's 290 pounds. You know, and I look at P.Y., and although Tojo may be somewhat humorous, there's nothing humorous about P.Y. because he's already a big guy, and you have those pads and those helmets, and that's an imposing sight, and Matt Bourne is certainly going to have to be careful as the Texas battleship is bolted all the way out on the floor. Boy, that's a lot of blubber flying past me, Mark. Look at that guy. Man, it took a, it took four army tents to make that outfit he's wearing, Mark. Jeez. I'm telling you right now, I'm putting my money on P.Y. Chuhai against Bourne in this football match. He looks awesome, Mark. Did you hear that? Tojo's calling signals to him. I understand what he's saying. Oh, he's in trouble. Look at that. Well, the battleship made the stand, the mistake of coming into that two upright, and P.Y. took him off his feet again. And P.Y. is all over the ring, knocking. 300 pounds of the Texas Battleship out of the ring. Mark, that's the same thing he's going to do to Matt Bourne. I promise you that. Coach Yamamoto barking instructions over the house microphone as he shoves the Texas Battleship out of the ring again upside down. That's three times out, Mark. <laughs> that would have finished Bourne right there. And Refrigerator Chuhai is in charge of this event. You know, he does kind of look like the refrigerator standing up there. Look at that padding he's wearing. Or is that is that padding or not? He's setting him up, Mark. He whips him in. Oh, what a cross body! Well, from what I understand, Tojo readily accepted this opportunity for this bout. As you heard him say, the Japanese are better at building cars 
had better uh, television and electronics, and he says better wrestlers and better football players, too. And Colin Orsak is making the point, I think, somewhat plausible. Of course, he readily accepted it. He knows that P.Y. is going to kill Matt Bourne with a helmet and shoulder pads. He outweighs him by 100 pounds, Mark. Everybody knows huh, that when it comes down, they can't get away, okay? This, is, this ring is only about 20 by 20. Matt Bourne can't run from P.Y. too high. Everybody knows when a lineman gets a hold of a, of a quarterback, he annihilates him. And that's what P.Y. Chew High is going to do to Matt Bourne, I promise you. The Texas Battleship having difficulty staying on his feet against the force of the football lineman, P.Y. Chew High. Rolls him over. Pins him one, two, three, and Chew High has won. All right, P.Y. is the winner, and we'll look forward to the football bout showdown. That should be something like we have never seen before. All right, Mike, take it away. Thank you, Mark Lawrence. I tell you, P.Y. Chuhai may think he's a football player, but we'll find out what kind of man he is when he has to face maniac Mad Bourne in a football match coming up real soon. Let's take a break. We'll be back to more USWA action right after this. USWA Wrestling Excitement returns to Evansville, Indiana at the Evansville Coliseum Wednesday, January the 31st. We've got a marvelous main event, guitar on a pole. Jeff Jarrett against Billy Joe Travis. Whoever climbs the pole gets the guitar, can use it as they please. Other great bouts include Todd Morton against the Soul Taker, the Tennessee Stud Stable against Bill Superstar Dundee and Dirty Dutch Mantell for the World Tag Team title. Chris Champion leaving town. Dirty white girl at stake. That's right. That's the bout. No time limit. No disqualification. The dirty white boy against Chris Champion. You'll see a Texas Bull Row match. Dustin Rhodes against gorgeous Gary Young. And a football match. Maniac Matt Bourne against P.Y. Chu High. Tojo Yamamoto in the corner. They'll rig out in football gear. The pads, the helmets, the whole nine yards. And the loser's the one who gets butted and knocked out of the ring. Jeff Jarrett moving down the aisle, saying hello to the fans and ready for action here in the ring and ready to talk about excitement coming up. Jeff, a lot of great stuff going on, but what I'm concerned about is your well-being. Things seem to get wilder. They sure do. It gets wilder and wilder every single week. But Billy Joe Travis, this week is my week. You know, I've been in a, a couple of different kind of matches with you, and it seems like you always come out on the upper hand. If you use a trash can or a chain or your guitar. Well, that's what I'm here to talk about today is your guitar. Because this week, the match is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be evened up. Because, yeah, I'm going to walk down one aisle and you're going to walk down the other and we're going to meet in that ring. And there's going to be one guitar up on a 15-foot pole. That's right. The, the guitar is going to be stuck on top of that pole. And one of us is going to get it to smack it right over the top of the other head. And Billy, I can promise you one thing. I'm going to bust your head open if it's the last thing I do, because I'm taking that guitar and smashing it over your head. Well, after what we've been seeing, I think we can all appreciate what has just been said as we go to the ring now and get ready for action in the squared circle. Oh, I tell you what, who does Jeff Jarrett think he is? He comes out, you know, the guitar is going to be above the ring, yes. Even if he got it down, can he play a tune on a guitar? No. Can he sing? No. Billy Joe Travis is the greatest entertainer and wrestler, bar none, in the USWA. So I don't know what Jeff Jarrett thinks he's doing by having a guitar up above the, the ring, but Billy Joe's going to take care of him, Mark. The bell rings and we're underway. Jimmy James, the opponent for Jeff Jarrett. And you're enjoying USWA wrestling excitement at its finest. The referee stance as Jarrett will pull him down with the arm drag. And Jimmy James complains about tights. Oh, yeah, I think he did pull his tights. You know, they were collar and elbow there, locked up. All of a sudden, Jeff just pulled him over with an arm drag. I think he had the tights, Mark. I think the kid's got a legitimate gripe. 
Referee stance into the arm bar, twisted over the head, into the ropes, the rebound, over the hip. What a hip toss. Oh, look at that. Jeff must have had his tights again. I didn't see any tight pulling. Well, of course you didn't see any tight pulling. You're so biased, it makes me sick. The referee stance again. A struggle between these two. Jared is picked up, taken down with a shot. Jumps to the elbow. Jared out of the way. Oh, yeah. Now he's going to turn it around. Look at that high slam. Woo! Jeff's setting him up, Mark. Look, see the way he's waiting. Oh, yeah. That's how he got him up there so high. He pulled his tights again, Mark. Why does Jeff have to cheat? I'd like to know that. Why does he have to cheat? He's a good wrestler. He knows how to wrestle, stay in the rules. Well, if you remember, my resolution in 1990 is not to let you upset me. Why should I upset you? I'm just out here calling the match. Look at this. He whips Jeff off. What's he going to do to him? Oh, shoulder block. James goes down. Yeah, there it is. There's a hip. Oh, no. Jeff reversed it and hip tossed him. I think he had his tights again. James back in the rope, and Jared will wait patiently as referee Falk does the counting. And Jeff moves in. Here we go again. A collar and elbow in the middle of the ring. Look at that. Now that's what he should have done all along. He raked Jeff's eyes. It's hard to see a man to hit him when your eyes are blind. Look at him. He's going to work, Mark. He's beating on Jeff. I like this. Into the ropes. He ducks. Comes back. Ducks again. Boom. There's an illegal fist from Jarrett. There's another one. I'll tell you what, that kid knows how to throw a punch, Mark. He shoots James into the ropes and comes off. What an elbow. The thing that Terrence missed earlier is the fact that neither of the individuals will be wanting to play a tune on any guitar. It's going to be probably guitar smashing time when it is pulled off the pole. Mark Jeff setting him up. I know what's coming. Look at that drop kick. Count of one, two, three, and Jeff Jarrett is the winner. I'll say this for him, he's got one of the prettiest drop kicks in the business. Guarantee you this, wrestling fans, if Jeff Jarrett gets a hold of that guitar on that pole, he's going to be playing some string music of a different kind. Let's take this break. We'll be going back to the Sportatorium in Dallas right after these messages on USWA Wrestling. John from the USWA Broadcast Center. We've heard from Jeff Jarrett and his remarks about Billy Joe Travis. I understand Travis is headed to the ring right now for a match in Dallas, Texas at the Sportatorium. Mark Lawrence is ringside with the action. Take it away, Mark. Billy Joe Travis moving down the aisle, followed by Skandor Akbar. As I talk to the entire building here. As Billy Joe moves down the aisle, ready for his bout. He has got a, I must admit, very attractive ring jacket, ring robe, that he is wearing out here to walk around in front of the fans with. That's a stunning robe he has on. That cost him thousands of dollars, Mark. Billy Joe wanting praises from the fans is not getting that, though. Skandor Akbar angry with one lady in particular. Robe. I can't get over that. That's beautiful. That looks like that looks like something my designer Joanne Harris would have made. You know it? So what Billy is an entertainer. You know, when that guitar is up on top of that pole. You know, I, I, what can I say, Mark? I'm popular, okay? I want you to notice something. When Billy gets in here, I want you to notice the tights that he's wearing, Mark. What, what about the tights? I can't see his tights yet. Now Billy Joe wants the microphone. You'll see. Anybody want to hear me speak? <laughs> Too bad. You know, I've always said these idiots in Dallas, Texas, are illiterate. 
You know, I look around, and I have never, I have never in my life seen such an ugly, fat, stinking people. Hey, you put that camera down before I come down there and smash it, boy. You're not a boy, that's a woman. Oh, man, how ugly can we get? And now what I'm going to do is take this boy to school. Do you understand? Do you know what that means, you illiterate? Or take notice. Well, Terry Black waiting patiently for his opportunity against Billy Joe Travis. Billy Joe's intensity level as the road glitters in the night. Billy Joe's intensity level has really been accelerated. Look at Getting those. very intense in his bounce. Look at those beautiful trunks he has on. I gave him those pink trunks, Mark. Here's Billy Joe now taking off the ring robe and taking it for all it's worth. Gave him those trunks. That, that beautiful pink. He's a stunning individual, Mark. And I tell you what, Friday night, he's going to take care of Jeff Jarrett. I don't know what that is hanging out of the back of them, but I don't think that's supposed to go with the tights. You watch. You don't make fun of Billy Joe Travis. You hear me? He's going to make quick work of this Terry Black. I'll tell you that right now. The bell and the bout is underway and Billy Joe can't get the people stirred up. They're too tickled at his feathers showing. Hey, let me tell you something right there. Hold on. I don't need your help, so just shut up. Terrence has pointed out the feather and Travis is upset with the cackling fans. Yeah, but he's just going to take it out on this guy. That's all that's going to happen. Billy Joe Travis probably the greatest wrestler to ever come through Texas, Mark. He's a technician in that ring. Uh-oh, hey, hey, kid, watch out. He rolls the him up, The greatest Mark. wrestler just nearly got pinned. And now Billy Joe is angry and in a rage, and here we go. What an elbow he just gave him. <laughs> Now, now roll him up from behind when his back's turned. Head smashed in the turnbuckle. Mark recently, young Jeff Jarrett and Billy Joe Travis had one of the most grueling matches that I've ever seen. A lot of bad blood with young Jeff Jarrett devastation. But Billy Joe's intensity level has increased so much. This man is a dangerous hey, man. This man is a technician. Like this is Billy Joe Travis. Here's a man on the roof. He is, shut up. He is a man Get up, boy. obsessed Come on. with taking Jeff Jarrett apart, and he will do so. Devastation is still number one. Don't forget it. I certainly won't forget it. Great shot of that move by Billy Joe Travis to drag Terry Black back in the ring, literally the hard way. You know, I want to make a, a little assessment here, Mark. Billy Joe Travis told me not too long ago. Uh-oh, side suplex coming up. Nobody does it better than Billy. Watch this, Mark. You'll learn something. And Billy Joe very arrogantly pins Terry Black for two and then pulls him up for a little more punishment and humiliation. Now, what I was saying is Billy Joe told me back in the back that the reason he handles Jeff Jarrett as easily as he does every week, look at that suplex, Mark, is that he taught Jeff Jarrett everything that Jeff knows about the sport. Okay, they used to be tag team partners and he taught Jeff everything. So he knows what Jeff's gonna do before Jeff even does it. And chanting, we want Jeff, we want Jeff. You sure that's what they're saying? Sounds me like. I'm positive, I can hear. Sounds to me like they're saying we want to pin. They want him to pin the guy. You're not going to upset me. 
I, I'm just going to maintain a professional profile as Billy Joe delivers yet another big elbow and comes to the rope for more on the microphone. That's what Jeff Jarrett would get if he were here right now. Anybody want to challenge me? Anybody want to challenge me? Come on down. I don't need this fat woman. She's got a weight Come advantage on. on Billy. I'll beat you up too, you big ugly monster. Get a shot of that woman right there. Come on. Anybody, come on down. Well, Billy oh, Joe's right. confidence level is certainly at an all-time high. Billy Joe's confidence level is something else. He's challenging all covers. And, you know, as intensified as he has become, he can take care of himself in any situation. There was always this uh, miscomprehension of Billy Joe being uh, somewhat uh, uh, comedy, cartoon. That is not the case. There is no room for comedy in cartoon. It's just a misconception. Billy Joe's good natured. But when he gets in that squirt circle, he gets the job done. Billy Joe Travis really making an embarrassing situation out of this bout with Terry Black as now Black is thrown to the floor. What a move. Did you see him hit that floor, Mark? And now the fans really chanting, we want Jeff. Yeah, well, I know for a fact that Billy Joe wants Jeff, too. Huh. He's not scared of anybody. He's challenging fans out here, Mark. Uh-oh. Terry Black's going to be slammed out on the floor. That can ruin a guy's career, Mark, on that floor. In a recent bout in which no television was made, someone actually went through the floor. And that just is an illustration of the kind of intensity that goes on. And Come on, Come on. Now Billy Joe's up on the apron. There, he needs to help him back in. Bronco Lubitsch is counting, you know. Billy don't want to pin like, he don't want a victory with a count out. He wants to pin this guy. Now he's got him back up. What's he going to do, Mark? He's going to embarrass him by holding him up. I like that. I personally like that. Down over the ribcage goes Terry Black. What a backbreaker. Count of two, and Billy Joe could have pinned him and pulled him up for more, and the more noise the fans make, the more punishment Billy Joe is going to dish out. Of course he is. These people ought to be quiet. They ought to sit in reverence and watch Billy Joe. He is a power What's this? I don't know. Everyone's jumped up and is screaming, but I don't see anyone. What is this? Hey, what's Jarrett doing coming down here? He has no he has no business being down here, does he? Well, the fans are chanting for him, and he's shown up. <laughs> Jeff is saying, I'm here. Let's put your money where your mouth is. What's he doing down? This disgusts me. Billy's out here. He's got a match. Now, Bronco Lubitsch is going to have to give the match to Billy Travis. He's going to have to give it to him. Jeff's interfering. He has no place out here. Boy, I tell you what. Akbar saying no way. Billy Joe seems to have mixed emotions. Jeff wants Terry Black out of the way. the same way mark get out of here jarrett you have no business being here billy joe taking instructions from as to what to do and jeff jarrett very patiently waiting saying come on in i'm tired of the rhetoric let's get it on right now all right billy's gonna get him mark billy's gonna look at that punch it's all gonna be billy travis each man scoring points on the other. Look at those punches. Jarrett's reeling, but he's getting back up. He's getting up every time, Mark. Oh, no. What a shot. He just hit 
Billy with. Man, Billy hit him with the kitchen sink, and Jared was passing up like a jack in the box. Billy Joe checking to see if his teeth are still in place. And I think Jared is going to go up the aisle. There's no place for this. Well, let's check out the excitement moving back to Mike. And All right, the action's out of hand at the Sportatorium. While they restore order, let's take a look of Billy Joe Travis up close and personal. I got to tell you, I think Billy Joe Travis has some aspirations of being a singer. He's got a long way to go, but he is one tough wrestling customer. Let's go back to Mark Lawrence at the Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas, for information on where you can see the USWA on tour. Okay, time now to check out some of the great places that the USWA will be in the coming weeks with some really... Look at that. There's well, Billy back. He wants to talk, I'm sure. Well, I see him. Let, let me see if I can get the microphone over here. and you want a guitar on the pole. Well, let me tell you something, boy. You're in bad trouble. You know that's my specialty. Ask Bill Dundee. Ask Eric Embry. Ask them all who's the king of the guitar. Jeff, Jerry, you are in trouble, boy, because I'm going to go up that pole like a rabbit. Boo! And I'm going to get that guitar, and I'm going to smash it over your head, boy, because you know how it feels, and I'm going to hurt you. I guarantee you in it. I guarantee I'm going to bust that head with that guitar. I'm going to make you bleed all over this place. Then I'm going to lick it up and beat him again. I'm going to break it till the splinters left. Get it, boy. Well, Mark, I can't stand here and be repetitive of what Billy Joe has just said. You can feel the intense that Billy Joe has. And you know, Jeff Jarrett, I've been around a while, and devastation, this is the most grueling situation that I've encountered because Billy Joel wants you in the worst way. And when it comes down to guitars, well, Billy Joel is certainly the king. And he proved, and you know what I'm talking about, Jeff. You were in the match of your life just recently. I'm gonna hurt him. And Billy, I know Billy Joel. And you can see just how intensified that Billy Joel Travis is. So Jeff Jarrett, your days are numbered. Tell him to get his out that yeah. You're going to be retired, boy, because I'm going to put you out of action. 
All right, that's Billy Joe and Akbar coming back. Since they've come back, we'll jump in and take this pause and then come back for more. SWA Wrestling Excitement returns to Evansville, Indiana at the Evansville Coliseum Wednesday, January the 31st. We've got a marvelous main event, guitar on a pole. Jeff Jarrett against Billy Joe Travis. Whoever climbs the pole gets the guitar, can use it as they please. Other great bouts include Todd Morton against the Soul Taker, the Tennessee Stud Stable against Bill Superstar Dundee and Dirty Dutch Mantell for the World Tag Team title. Chris Champion leaving town. Dirty white girl at stake. That's right. That's the bout. No time limit. No disqualification. The dirty white boy against Chris Champion. You'll see a Texas bull rope match. Dustin Rhodes against gorgeous Gary Young. And a football match. Maniac Matt Bourne against P.Y. Chu High. Tojo Yamamoto in the corner. They'll rig out in football gear. The pads, the helmets, the whole nine yards. And the loser's the one who gets butted and knocked out of the ring three times. That's Evansville, Indiana, Evansville Coliseum, Wednesday, January the 31st. Evansville, Indiana, 400 Court Street. There's been an awful lot of wrestling matches. There's been an awful lot of fights. And I know Robert Fuller and Stud Stable to get out here, and they seem to think because they're bigger than Bill Dundee and Dutch Mantel that they're going to run all over them. Well, brother, wrestling is like physical chess. You got to wait till somebody makes a mistake, then you capitalize on it, and you pin the shoulders one, two, three. That's wrestling, but that ain't going to be what this is in 400 Court Street, brother. This is going to be a fight, because that's what the stud stable likes to do. They like to fight. Oh, and they're real good at it, or they wouldn't be the world's champion. Well, Dutch Mantel's real good at it, and Bill Superstar Dundee's real good at it. And the only thing different, boys, is you're going to carry the belts to the ring, and we're going to carry them back, and that'll make us the world champions, and we won't mind coming up to Evans, Bill, and we won't mind going all over the place because we like all the people out there and we like wrestling. So just let me tell you something, Robert Fuller. Oh, you're one heck of a wrestler and a good fighter. And so are you, Brian Lee. But you're going to come to the ring all confident because you're bigger than us. And that's your mistake. We're taking you at Wednesday night, boys. So just shine them up and bring them to the ring. All right, big Dustin Rhodes ready to talk about bull rope excitement. Dustin. Yeah, Young, I want you... And everybody around the world that's sitting at home eating their TV dinners wanting to be somebody to listen up. Each week, you run away from me. And last week and last night, I lost a lot of blood because of you, Gary Young. And now I've asked the USWA for a Texas bull rope match so you can lose some blood. Now, brother, this bull rope here is 20 foot long, got a 20 pound cow bell right smack dab in the middle. And when I get that bell, when I smash your bozo head, it's gonna look like hamburger meat. I'm gonna grind your head, brother. You listen to me, listen to me now. You see, this bull rope's been in the family a long time. Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, that's beaten everybody possible with this bull rope. And like father, like son, and I'm gonna take it to you, wherever, whenever it may be, Gary Young, prepare yourself. All right, thank you, Dustin. Dustin Rhodes wound up and ready for anything with Gary Young, especially the opportunity with that bull rope. Okay, let's send it to the ring now and get ready for Dustin to be in action here. Well, I'll tell you what. As what? I'll tell you what, Mark. Dustin looks like he hasn't been sleeping too well. His eyes are all black. Look at that. I think he's worried about this bull rope match. You know, Dusty gave him that rope to whip Gary Young. Wouldn't it be an embarrassment to him if Gary Young beat him in that match? That's something to think about. All right, here comes the mass marble down with the ring attendants. I think this towel you've draped out down here must have been used to wash that mud of yours. Hey, you know, I had to leave just now during that last match. I apologize. Pookie was, they, they just told me. They called me. They said Pookie's sick. Harry Von Eric scared you and you went running away. Oh, what do you mean? That is your opinion. My dog was sick. Pookie was sick and I had to leave. I won't, I won't let it happen again. Dustin Rhodes against the match marble and it's arms over the head. Dustin picks him up, down with the atomic drop over the knee, and then goes to the rope, right back out with the clothesline. What a series of moves there by Dustin. 
So I tell you that atomic drop, you know, he's six foot five, Mark. When he hits you with an atomic drop, it's a way, long way down. What an elbow. I like this. I like the way he goes and he gets the arm. He's working on that arm, Mark. This kid knows how to wrestle, but Gary Young knows how to brawl. That's what it's all about. Over and down goes the mass marble, and it's Dustin Rhodes in charge. All six foot five, son of Dusty Rhodes. I know that gorgeous Gary continues to have wise comments about Dusty, which evidently is where the problems with Dustin got started. Well, Dustin, he's got the, you call him the mass marvel, I think I, I think his name's the Avenger. Okay, let's, let's get it right. Mask Avenger. The Mask Avenger. He's working on the Mask Avenger's arm. Now he's got him up and he's whipped him into the ropes. Oh, big drop kick. Big drop kick from six foot five Dustin Rhodes. About 350 pounds probably. I don't know his exact weight. He's got him up, Mark. What's he gonna do with it? Drop him down on his back and he hits hard. Well, Terrence, I'll make a deal with you. I'll call him the Mask Avenger if you'll call uh, Chico Torres by his correct name later on. Uh, I always call Pedro by his right name. Armbar by Dustin Rhodes. Puts that grip up under the arm, and that's extra pain. I'll tell you what, you can take a shoulder out of socket by doing that, Mark. The way he's working that arm, the mask Avenger there, he's going to be sore for a couple of days. I promise you that. Does Dustin really think he can do this to Gary Young, though? That's what I want to know. Dustin takes the arm all the way over the head, and now wants to deliver an elbow under the already twisted arm, and that's exactly what he does. What an ego this guy's got. It's almost as big as his belly. Now, how could you say ego? What has he done to bring out your verbally offensive remarks against him in this bout? Didn't you, didn't you see him just then? He was taunting this masked Avenger. Woo! to the crowd, boy. Nobody needs this crowd. Leg scissors by big Dustin Rhodes. As you see a shot of the action, as the fans see it from about the 12th row, with the camera zooming back in. Boy, he's still staying on that arm, Mark. He's still working on that arm. He may get a submission out of this guy. I think that's what he's working for. Dustin back on the arm of the Masked Avenger. And into the ropes they go. Okay, this is what the Avenger, there you go. He, he saw his opportunity and he seized it. Did you see that, Mark? He raked his eyes on those ring ropes. That's a smart maneuver. Now stay on top of him. You've got to stay on top of Dustin Rhodes. I promise you that. The Avenger back in the corner. He bit his ear. I like that. Oh, he's got that. Has he got him bleeding? Has he got Dustin bleeding? Relax, Terrence. Dustin with a kick to the midsection and an elbow to the head. Dustin now beginning to jab and weave. Dustin with a tremendous ride, and the masked man is not completely off his feet. Yeah, there's a big illegal right hand. Look at that belly to belly, Mark. This is it. Count of one, two, three. Dustin Rhodes has won the bout. All right, we're sitting back to you, Mike. Thank you very much, Mark Lawrence. I'm glad I'm not in your shoes today. Let's take a quick look on how the USWA can raise funds for your organization. Now you can have the stars of the USWA in your hometown. It's America's number one fundraiser, USWA Wrestling. The stars, the action, the excitement, USWA Wrestling. For more information on how you can raise money for your organization, write the USWA, Post Office Box 1783, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37077, or call 615-824-8523. USWA Wrestling, America's number one fundraiser. We'll be right back with more from the USWA Broadcast Center right after this.
Way from the Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas. Be sure to join us at the same time next week. From the USWA Broadcast Center, Michael St. John saying so long, everyone. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.